All right, Gunnar, we're good to go. Right on. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Mozilla Webmaker Weekly Community Call. It's great to see all those great names popping into the Etherpad in the 40s and the 50s. Uh, we'd like to kick this week's call off with a welcome to some first-timers and new team members. Uh, Emily, if you are on the line and have the ability to hit star 7 on your phone set, I wonder if you would like to say hello and tell us about your new journey in the Open Badges Kingdom. Hi everybody. Uh, this is Emily Galagashi. I uh, live and work in San Francisco and I'm really excited to be joining Mozilla Foundation as the new uh, community and product manager, or community and uh, design manager. Awesome. Great to have you here. And, and you can star seven to go back into listener mode. Sanka, is Sanka on the call? Hello, yeah. Hi. Hi, Sanka. Welcome. So, so what are what are you interested in or working on? I'm uh, working on submitting patches to Firefox, and I organize webmaker events in my college. That is fantastic. To organize a webmaker event is divinity. So thank you. That's great to have you on the call. And on line 65, Andy. Is Andy on the call? Yeah, I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Hey, yes. You want to say hello and tell us about some of the stuff you work on? Yeah, hi. I'm Andy Rehawk. Uh, this is my first time on this call, but I've been hanging out in the... Can you increase your volume? We, we can't hear you. I'm not sure if I can make it any louder than that. <laughs> okay, we're we're getting ya. Okay, um, I am working uh, with the DML badges competition, um, and so I'm really familiar with Open Badges. And this past summer, we did a hack jam at Indiana University. Um, and so I'm kind of tracking Hack Jam stuff as we hope to pull another one off in the coming months. Right on. That is fantastic and it is excellent to have you here on the call. So thanks for joining. Hey, Gunnar, we're getting lots of weird alien feedback. I'm going to see if we can correct that. Yes, exactly. I was just going to suggest. The conference has been muted. Gunnar, you'll need to star seven. I'm back in play. Thank you. Nice. All right. Well, welcome to all of our new folks. Thank you, Emily, and Sanka, and Andy for introducing yourself. Let me turn everyone's attention to line 83 in the Etherpad to your asynchronous click-through pleasure. Lots of good blog posts and other uh, updates that we encourage you to check out later on. But for now, let me turn everyone's attention to line 100 in the Etherpad, spreading the word about MozFest. Mark Sermon, are you taking the lead on this item? I'm going to say a few things. Um, so, hi everybody. Um, and as we've discussed in a, a bunch of places over the last week or so, MozFest is upon us. And that means getting people signed up and recruited is absolutely uh, job one for this week. And, um, you know, I don't think we need to panic. We're actually well ahead of where we were last year. But at the same time, we have a much more ambitious plan both in terms of the number of people we want there, we're, we're aiming in the kind of 700 range, but also in terms of really getting the right people there for the sessions that we all want to work on. Uh, and so what Matt has done and Michelle and Gunnar have done is uh, prepare uh, materials that can help people promote what we're doing. Uh, and also Matt, and I think Rebecca will come on and ex explain this, Matt, Rebecca, Michelle, and everyone are working on getting uh, as good copy as we can up on the site so that as we send people there, um, you know, it's going to be exciting. They're going to understand why they fit in and they're going to sign up. So a huge amount of effort has gone uh, on, on on those fronts. But the, the two things that will make a difference and have to happen this week and that almost everybody on this call should feel responsible for, um, and, and I, let's just say everybody so you know it's you, um, is a, reaching out to any individuals who you're hoping will be there for sessions you're involved in or projects that you're working on, uh, or even just people you know who are interested. And if they're people who live a plane flight away from London as opposed to a subway ride away from Ravensburn, 
you need to reach out to them really in the next day or two because we're getting to the point that it's expensive to book plane tickets, especially from outside of Europe. Uh, so I've been doing that. I've, I think we can put the Etherpad in, in this call Etherpad if we want, keeping track individually of who I've invited. Uh, I'm doing more of those today and tomorrow. Uh, but everybody who's got any personal contacts that they want to have at OnceBest needs to kind of reach out to those personal contacts in the next couple of days and say, hey, really want you there. Uh, here's the link. Please sign up. Tell me if you're going to be there. And you know, for people who haven't done MozFest before or haven't organized big conference, conferences, it's that personal outreach which makes or breaks whether we get the right people there. Lots of people will also just sign up and we'll, we'll meet new people, but that personal outreach is the thing that makes this or breaks this. And so everybody should set aside a couple of hours over the next day or two and get that done and write on that Ethan pad who it is that they've reached out to. The other thing that's going to make a huge difference, and I think Rebecca will talk about this, is that we really tell a story with the session descriptions and the, the list of people who are on the, the MozFest website. You should be able to go to that site and say, hey, I get it. I get what's happening there. I get why it's exciting to me and what I'm going to do there, and I get how it fits into WebMaker and what Mozilla is doing overall. And we've got, I think, a, a bunch of work to do over the next few days to just get the session descriptions that people have written to the point where they snap together and tell that story. And so Rebecca, I think again, is going to talk on this call about how she wants to work with people, um, but is going to support people in improving their sessions so we get to that, uh, their session descriptions so we get to that point. Um, but do know if you are running a session, she's going to reach out to you on that. And having your session description clear about what is happening, why it's awesome, and who needs to be there is the number one recruiting asset that you can give to the whole team uh, in terms of getting the right people to MozFest. And so it may feel like you really need to show up the right templates or the right code. It may feel like you need to uh, really worry about you know, what's going to happen at minute 17 in your session. But really what matters most is you've described it in a way that the people you want there are going to understand that it's something they want to do and that they show up. And so that's why those descriptions are not a side effort. They are the core of making, uh, getting the right people to your session so that your session goes well. So those are two things that anybody who's got any role in MozFest, which is almost everybody on the call, needs to focus on in the next couple of days so we move the ball uh, ahead and get the right people there. I don't know, Matt or Michelle, if there's anything else you, you want me to say or if anybody has any questions. I don't think so. I mean, in a minute we'll get into the stuff you just described around um, Rebecca's website work. I guess I just wanted to call out the uh, slash share page on, um, it's linked on uh, line 105. So basically we've gotten a lot of requests from people on this call and, and beyond for various assets. So this page is really our attempt to gather them all in one spot. So if you need copy to send an email to somebody along the lines that Mark just described, uh, there's links to copy here. If you need visual assets or logos or photos you can use with press, um, they're all here. So if there's something that you need to do that outreach work this week that isn't on the share page, um, please let us know in the pad or give, give me a shout now. Right on. Anything else to add on this item? Excellent. Thank you, Mark, and everybody, and we do encourage there's, folks to do there's as a, much There's some, some questions in the pod, Gunnar. I guess I'd just say, like, in line 136, do we have a simple letter that we can cut and paste to an email to send out to possible invitees? Um, so the answer is yes, and that's what the share page is for. So that kind of copy and that kind of stuff um, should all be on that, that page. And I'll just go a step further. If there's a thing you need that's not there, then ask us and will it may exist and not be there or we'll make it. All right. Thanks for that great question. Thanks for the link that addresses that question. And 
Uh, let us move on to line 144, Moz Fest session organizers. Rebecca, Mark created anticipation about your upcoming Blurbage. What are you going to share? Oh, I sure am excited. Um, we've got a really cool thing happening this week. I'm going to be contacting each and every one of you that's running a session um, and talking to you about your descriptions. Mark did a really good job of outlining what it was that um, we're trying to accomplish. And I'll give you um, a couple of bullet points on how we're going to do that. Um, I will uh, be adding a few things to your descriptions like hashtags, linking out to the webmaker themes, and finding ways to improve how people can interact with your uh, session, provide questions, details, information, um, both before, during, and after the uh, session that you run. Um, so how it's going to happen is I'm going to send you a direct email about your post um, containing a um, uh, uh, description that has some of those elements uh, placed into it um, that you can talk to me about or you can approve outright if you like, um, or we can work on if I haven't quite got it correct. And I'd like you to reply um, with how you feel about it and add some special things. Like for example, I'm thinking about um, Chloe's presentation from her speed pitch at the All, all, at the all Hands. Elements like that um, will go a long way to um, boosting the webmakeriness of your project description. Thank you. Do you guys Thank have you, any Rebecca. questions? I, I, tried, I tried to uh, to answer questions <laughs> for you on line 164 um, to describe the process. So you will be hearing from me. I hope uh, you have time to reply pretty fast this week. Awesome. And you're getting a question in line uh, 168 about when is the Who's Coming session coming, and it's on Dev. Um, that, that is coming along. Tim and I are working on that <laughs> as well. Very nice. All right. Any other questions? I'm looking in the IRC and not seeing anything, so this is great. Moving on to line 176 in the Etherpad, Mozilla Ignite. Will Press star seven and tell us who has the vision for the fattest pipes. <laughs> you got uh, can you hear me? Hey. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, yeah, so we're at a really exciting point in the Mozilla Ignite uh, challenge. We just finished up the brainstorming round, um, and we picked the winners, and we have so we have eight winners. Uh, so this is you know just this is a again a part of the process where people just sort of brainstorm, ideate, think of. Think of the great apps from the future and don't actually have to be technologists or have to build them themselves. <clears throat> and the hope was that we would inspire uh, you know, people to pick up those ideas and, and actually build them now in this, in this subsequent phase to some extent. And in fact, like a lot of these people actually do want to build them, I, the ideas themselves. So that's um, pretty, pretty fortunate. So if you look, um, there's a link to the actual blog post. And I was just going to run through and maybe give you a quick like 20 seconds on each one. Um, you know, just to give you a little taste of, of what we're, what kinds of things are, are coming down the pipeline that you can look forward to in the, in the, in the hopefully not so distant future. Um, I will say that there were over 300 submissions. Um, there was fifteen thousand uh, dollars in prizes for these, and um, but now that the focus now the focus is really on actually building um, in this development set of development rounds over the next six months. Um, and you can see a few sample tweets. That, I don't know if people want to share that would be, be wonderful. Um, so the first idea, um, I'm going to jump right to the gold medal winners. This won five thousand dollars. It was the top prize, and it's a. The title was a, a real-time emergency response observation and supervision uh, system, essentially. So it kind of gets the idea of, of how do you understand what's going on during an emergency, and it would be an app that would take live video, very high-quality video from multiple feeds, as well as sensor data, you know, such as say in a fire, like heat. Uh, on building or smoke levels, and use that with massive sort of computing capacity to simulate and provide a, a, a truly real-time decision-making support system uh, to help coordinate with first responders and ultimately uh, with actual people who are in an, an emergency situation. So we thought, you know, we, we thought it really encapsulated maybe the best of all of the various pieces of this of these high-tech networks, um, and was something we wish that we wish the firefighters and rescue workers had today. 
<clears throat> so that was actually out of a Canadian uh, lab, the Shared Reality Lab in McGill, Jeremy Cooperstock, and he plans on building this. So that's a very cool um, app to have uh, uncovered. Uh, the next one is the Silver Prize winner of uh, from Purdue University. Uh, it's called Remote Control Process Control using a, re a reliable real-time protocol. And so, this the idea here is that you, you could, with sufficiently fast networks that are reliable and that the latency you know or lag is predictable, you can actually control remotely processing your processes. You know, like three um, D printing, where you have to do something, sense something, change something, you know, process control. Uh, this would also apply to surgical stuff, you know, if you want to do remote surgery or uh, monitoring um, a oil refinery or you know, any, any of these various things. And this group actually is working um, with, uh, a group, with some people in, on the East Bay in, in California, in the San Francisco Bay Area, to try and actually build this out. And, in fact, one of the, the partners is a company that's exported over $500 million in software to do process control type stuff, but it's all local. And this is so this could actually be something that again becomes real um, through, through this process. The next is um, another Canadian, Andor Salga, who uh, proposed an idea of real time 3D interactive telepresence. So this is you know another step beyond just high quality video conferencing, but would allow you to take uh, some kind of 3D sensors, in this case uh, the Connect, because everyone is, you know, it's a cheap, amazing sensor, to do two-way, truly real-time, like, meaning very low latency um, video conferencing in 3D. So you could get a 3D view of a patient, a physician could get a 3D view of a patient, or you could imagine doing um, an science experiment and, and streaming that to another classroom, um, that, that kind of thing. Uh, the next um, is a health app called Long-Term Monitoring and Crisis Management System. So this is tackling, this is sort of the holy grail. Oh, I should have said Ander actually wants to build his app too. So the first three are all apps that are entering into the actual development challenge. <clears throat> um, so this third, this fourth one is, a, is now a health app, kind of targeting, I guess, the holy grail, where you know, we're, we're clearly moving into this ubiquitous, highly diverse, cheap sensor world. And you know that's going to change the way we our health and healthcare systems work. So this app basically pulls together some of that sensor data. Um, I think primarily initially focusing on you know, some of the stuff you have in your smartphone and um, and an EKG that they're going to get a prototype of, uh, and you know pulling that together to do real time analysis of the of of the pattern as opposed to really the low, very low resolution analysis we have now, which is when you go to your doctor and maybe hook you up to a heart monitor or they ask you about how you're feeling or how many times you fell in the last week. You know, it's, it's, not, uh, it's, it's bringing together a lot of new data and I think will allow not just better prevention and stuff, but under, new, new understanding of um, like various biomedical kind of conditions. Uh, next is high quality open source web conferencing. Uh, yet another Canadian team who um, is also interested in building it. I should say the last guys were also interested in building it, two, two folks from Boston. Um, so this app is basically to, to address the issue of um, you know, that everyone should have access to education no matter where they are. And it creates, it's, just, it's essentially a, a high quality version of today's, kind of, of today's web, web conferencing software, but it's open source. and it, um, Actually, well, it, it it should be something that people actually can use uh, in in classrooms and other uh, really any organization that needs web conferencing like us <laughs> um, could use this kind of thing. And, and the the where they take advantage of the network is, is where they take advantage of the network is at its higher quality. Uh, okay, Connect Health 3D. So this was a a fairly innovative and cool idea, which is that. If you can play games socially with others, like fitness games in particular, you can, you know, it's more enjoyable, you're more likely to do them. And so this would take uh, 3D information from Connect and be able to stream that to you know, five or six of your friends who want to play a game at the same time. And the where this gets cooler though is that you can actually, or at least propose, you would use this for doing stuff like physical therapy where you could remotely interact with a physical therapist. Um, at some level, and, and they suggested this, it would be great to automate that to where the system in doing your game, like say my grandma's playing this game every week or, or a few times a week, 
detects that she's starting to limp or you know, use her leg a little differently than she would otherwise and says, like, maybe she's got some problems with her ankle that she's not even necessarily aware of. And those kinds of things you could then put a brace on or do something, uh, you know, get a cane and prevent a, like serious, serious things that happen. Um, the next is smart streets for smart cars. And so this was just a general idea of, um, you know, our, our transportation infrastructure needs to get more intelligent, and we're embedding sensors in, in a lot of it now. And it would like it would be great to use these sort of smart uh, networks to um, to route, you know, route traffic, save energy when roads aren't when you're turning off lights and and things when roads aren't needed, um, helping avoid collisions or pedestrians getting hit. So. Um, they're interested in building it. I'm not, I think they're probably one of the um, farther away from building something in more of the idea phase than these others, but still, still very cool. And finally, this a project called the Rashomon Project, after the that, um, Kurosawa film. So the idea here is kind of similar to the first one, actually, in that you, how do you how do you create a sort of multiple perspective um, awareness or capture of an event? And so this would take different video from you know phones and high quality cameras and things and weave them all together to create an understanding of complex events that happen. So, you know, a riot that's going on or um, a concert or a, you know a fire. Like there are plenty of there are lots of different uses for this kind of thing. Um, and could kind of create some I think it has the potential for some really interesting educational uh, stuff and very you know cool like sort of choose your own adventure, like understanding the here square you know, like being able to, to, to move around different perspectives and really kind of getting a better, in some ways, providing a, a tool for empathy, I think, is, is very cool. So, so those are the eight winners. Um, we are, you know, cutting them checks, and we've been uh, touting them, and they're now really pushing and, and helping trying to incubate them and, uh, to get them into the challenge and actually build some of the things they're building. So. Those are some visions from the future. Is anybody have any questions? I kind of blasted through those. Well, that was a great list. I am not seeing any questions in the Etherpad, but if people do have questions, please put them uh, at line 194. Um, you might want to just briefly review the stuff that is there, well, the judges and, and the, the deadlines for the development round. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the judges were, were people, so we have two sets of judges. We have extremely high profile judges. Um, that you can see if you go to to um, the Missoula Ignite judges, you know people like Tim O'Reilly and Anish Chopra. Um, but those folks didn't judge the uh, idea phase. So through that, through our, um, a partnership with Zero Divide, uh, this is a California-based nonprofit, trying to, you know, attempting to bridge the digital divide, we reached out to a bunch of communities in the various domain areas, so in education and uh, public safety and, and others, and got a bunch of people who were interested in being mentors. So they didn't necessarily have a particular app they want, wanted to build or couldn't build an app themselves without developers, but um, were willing to help out and get involved and incubate. Kind of. and so we had 38 uh, judges who read through you know, a set of the ideas. Um, and the deadline is we, we've simplified the development round process to basically have anyone ship code by the end of, the, of each round. And there are three rounds. So this first round, is Thursday, October 25th. So, um, so the goal is for is for people to ship their ship code by then. It's a quick kind of code sprint. I mean, all of this is towards the prototype. So we're towards something that people could actually use, but uh, or beta test kind of pilot in six month window. But so obviously we don't expect people to have fully fully functioning prototypes at this point. But we want to see progress towards that goal, and the teams will then demo for the sort of higher level judges I mentioned, or, or the sort of more famous judges, whatever, the, uh, they'll, have, they'll have a little demo in the session. So. Uh, and how many developers have applied so far? We are, uh, so it's in, on the order of a dozen teams, in quotes, um, that we're working with. Some of them are you know, coming out of the idea rounds. Um, some of them are people who have been kind of part of the US Ignite family for a while. But um, it's going to take a lot of uh, outreach and incubation and uh, encouragement and catalyzing to get, to get, I think, everyone building stuff on these networks. So. Right on. Thank you, Will. 
And I just really want to do a shout out to Will and, and Ben Moskowitz. I, I had the pleasure of sitting with them in uh, Chattanooga a couple of weeks ago at the Ignite Hacks Fest, and the amount of work that went into judging the ideation process, just watching you guys hunch over your keyboards and give each of those a good look. Uh, props to you all for all the hard work that got us to this list of winners. Uh, and props for making this such an exciting program, because I think really this is this has been an amorphous undertaking that has really gained increasing focus as you've come on, Will, and as Ben has continued to bang the gong. So congrats on how far it's come, and can't wait to see where this goes next. Thanks. Absolutely. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, well, we have a new agenda item at line 211, open art. And Angela, perhaps open Angela, might you want to hit star seven and tell us about open art? Am I audible? You Am are. Audible? You're, a little, you're audible and a little far away from your mic. So you might want to see if you can get closer to your device, but come on down. Okay. Now I'm very close, so it should be Early okay. Light. Yes, okay. very good. <laughs> Okay, um, yes, we just made this a verbal update. Um, Open Art is a new project. Some of you may have seen it going by via Twitter and Facebook last week. And this is a collaboration that we're doing with iBeam in New York, an art and technology center there. And it's a project that's supported by the National Endowment for the Arts. <clears throat> um, basically, we have organized um, uh, an open call where people can apply to get one of three six-month fellowships um, at iBeam. And each of the selected projects uh, can be an artist or a team of people, so collaboratively between artists and technologists. Um, each team will be awarded $15,000 um, and a chance to work at iBeam for the six-month period. And this is really to create work that's at the intersection of art and the open web. So at the end of the six-month period, also actually during the six-month period, um, all teams will be sharing their process and work um, on the web. And at the end, uh, the projects will be presented at iBeam and obviously also on the web. So this is basically a call out for people to share the call for proposals. Um, Mass has already sent it out via Mozilla Twitter, so feel free to retweet that. and. Brett and Ben and I are the ones working on this project if you have any questions about it. That's it. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for that update. <clears throat> any questions? So you might want to look at lines 214 and 215. Uh, one of the questions is uh, getting these folks involved in MozFest. Anybody we want to invite? Uh, yeah, we can check that out. We'll be talking uh, with IBM folks this week as well, so um, I'll get back to you. We'll get back to you. And uh, deadline, yes, it cool. is pretty fast. If we do not um, get enough submissions, we may extend, but for now we're pushing it on uh, for October 12th so that we can also avoid the holiday season in this whole process. Um, in terms of if it's U.S. only, no, anyone in the whole world can apply for this. Um, but accommodation and travel is not provided. So uh, basically IBM can offer their workspace, but accommodation and finding it, et cetera, in New York is not provided. Got it. Okay. And looking at those other questions, I think a lot of that's getting answered in real time. So thank you on that. Yep. Very good. Well, thank you so much. Very exciting to see you working on this, and great to hear your voice on the call this morning. So beautiful people, we've arrived at line 223 where there are nonverbal updates, including items on MozCamp, road mapping from the All Hands, and many other things worthy of your attention. And there is also our perfunctory calendar link at line 244 for those who have temporal orientation to all things Mozilla. Uh, I am not seeing any other agenda items. Uh, Matt and others, the floor is open for any last minute agenda additions before we move to adjourn in humanely early 32 minutes. There's lots of road mapping goodness in 229, so maybe we can invite Ryan to just uh, say a few words about it. Love it. Ryan, road mapping? Here I am. Um, happy to uh, talk about it. I won't go through the line by line, but I think 
Um, for those that weren't there, um, lots of us uh, at the All Hands a few weeks ago got together and um, uh, took a uh, hard look at what we were working on and pulled together uh, a post-it note wall of road mapping goodness that we then tried to wrangle down into something that was useful uh, for us as a planning exercise. Um, and some of the things we've learned was it was a really useful exercise to do and also managing it as a Google Doc going forward is possibly completely unreasonable and crazy. And so we're not going to do that. Um, but what we are going to do is use it as a, um, as a useful tool in order to identify um, our priorities, which we've already done, um, and get those things to migrate their way into Asana uh, where we're doing our project management and tracking for those items. So uh, a couple of to-dos for folks uh, who worked on these. Check out the Google Doc. Lots of you have gone back and refined the descriptions, which I appreciate. Uh, and for those of you that uh, need a bit of extra time, thank you for going in and doing it. Um, now please go in, take a look at those, and if you haven't already started migrating those into Asana, which lots of you already have, um, where those are to-dos, please do that. And for those of you that have uh, already started, if you wouldn't mind going into that doc and striking through those items that you've already migrated so I can ultimately uh, move this document out of existence. So once we get all these things, uh, all the strike throughs, then I can, we can not use it anymore. Um, secondly, the, the main purpose here was to identify areas for resourcing and conflicts. Um, and so if you see those, I've created an etherpad where you can dump those questions and my takeaway will be to ensure that those conversations happen and that those resources get allocated or reallocated as we need them. Um, so that's where we're at with that. So two to-dos, migrating to Asana, striking through when they're done, to identifying any conflicts or resource issues that haven't already been addressed, surfacing them in the etherpad so we can have those conversations. Awesome. Thank you, Ryan. Any questions on any of that from anybody? Excellent. Any other agenda items? Wow. And Ryan, it's, that's how rumors get started with this whole thing about Matt building saunas. He started it. <laughs> Love it. All right. Beautiful people, unless there are objections, I am going to move to close this weekly phone call off. Thank you, everyone, who shared knowledge and otherwise helped create another very informative weekly call. We will look forward to seeing you same time next week. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Please stand by.